What's up guys, Miss Pass here back with another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes commentary video and today I wanted to talk to you guys about combat missions and platoon missions inside of territory battles. So the first one I wanted to talk about are platoon missions versus combat missions mostly because there's a little bit more to talk about I think and this screenshot has a lot more that I can actually talk to versus the combat missions. So. One of the first things we notice, top right corner, is assigned units 8 out of 10. That means that everyone in your guild is only going to be able to contribute 10 total units to each pl or rather two platoon missions. That means that you've got 90 characters right here that you've got to fill, 90 character slots, and each player can only fill 10 of those character slots. So we have to be strategic in how those troops are deployed. This is where the biggest emphasis on guild coordination, so having a third-party chat app like Discord or Line or Slack, is going to be incredibly important for your guild to coordinate who is filling which character slots. Obviously, you want players who have a very deep roster to go in and fill the most difficult slots first, because obviously, with your if your guild has a lot of lower... Uh, leveled characters or younger newer players in the guild that don't have as deep of a roster those players are going to want to save their characters for the combat missions because it's very important that you have enough characters in your roster and a deep enough roster that you can still make the best attempts at the combat missions as possible. If you notice on the screen, you have six platoons. That's pretty self-explanatory, but you notice that platoons one, two, three, and four are all worth 120,000 terrain points each. The fifth and sixth platoons, I imagine, are going to be the most difficult. In other words, probably have the most restrictive characters or least common characters uh, required for the platoon because they do cost or will reward more terrain points. So that just makes sense. In the notes, it also mentions that in addition to earning territory points for each completed a platoon, Guilds can also unlock powerful abilities from strategic landmarks like the Ion Cannon. So right here we're looking at the Ion Cannon Platoon mission. Every two platoons that are completed, which is why there's little hash marks there in the progress that shows one out of six for that one pl completed platoon. Every two platoons that are completed upgrade the magnitude of that platoon mission's ability up to a maximum of three tiers. So completing all six platoons would unlock the maximum power of the Ion Cannon. Now, these abilities will be available to the entire guild in combat missions. It just states entire guild in future combat missions. It doesn't state whether those um, abilities are exclusive to the one territory that the platoon mission is in, or if it is exclusive to just the phase, or what those, or if it's uh, available through the duration of the territory battle. That point is not 100% clear, so I can really only speculate, but the platoon missions will unlock abilities that are available to all guild members for their combat missions. So it's important to try your best to get the platoon missions finished and then go into the combat missions, especially for your weaker players. Speaking of combat missions, these are going to require a lot less coordination among your guildmates. You basically will just want to make sure that you've beaten or filled as many of the platoons as you can on the platoon missions, and then go in and do your combat missions. Now, if you have a smaller roster, if you are a newer player and don't have as deep of a roster, definitely try to let the other members of your guild fill those platoon missions so that you can try your best to get as many rounds of whichever tier of combat mission you choose. Now, going into the tiers, we know from the data mine, which I think this part of the data mine is probably fairly accurate, there are going to be multiple tiers for each player to choose from inside of the combat missions. The different tiers will probably have the different level requirements. So, for early phases, for a much um, more senior guild that has a lot more senior players with deeper rosters, you're probably going to be able to try the highest tier, which is probably going to have the highest uh, star level requirements and is probably going to have the most restrictive character requirements. In other words, the infamous Hoth Rebel Soldier and Hoth Rebel Scout will probably be a limiting factor in some of those higher tiers of combat missions. One other thing to note with combat missions is that stat bonuses will be granted to some units that are important to Hoth and Rebels. So Hoth 
Rebel Scout, Hoth Rebel Soldier, Rebel Officer Leia Organa, and Captain Han Solo. The Hoth Han will all be characters that get bonuses. I don't know about Commander Luke Skywalker. It's possible he could, but I wouldn't... I don't know. He might, may or may not. But you would probably see those units get little buffs. I don't know what they're going to be, but hey, hopefully they're awesome. Special missions, I don't really have any real information on those. I know that they're going to be a lot more restrictive on what characters are required, but they won't reward territory points, so most guilds will not be worried about those special missions. That about does it for this video, guys. I'm running out of time, want to keep it under six minutes. If you have any more questions about missions, combat missions, platoon missions, special missions, hit me up on my Facebook or on Twitter, or of course you can join the Discord server to continue the conversation. And as always, guys, I'll catch you later.